Hey, so I have here a bicycle wheel attached to a rope. The bicycle wheel is free to turn, as you can see, and if I lift it up, it falls down to the bottom under gravity, as you would expect. But I'm going to try and show you something strange that happens if you rotate the wheel while it's in an upwards position like this. So as you can see, it rotates around this way. This is called gyroscopic precession, and it's the reason that it's so easy to balance on a bike. Once you get the wheels moving, it kind of wants to stay upright. But why exactly does this happen? What could possibly explain this motion? Well, mathematically, it's because a torque is created. A torque is a force acting at a distance from a pivot point that makes something's rotation increase or decrease. And to be more exact, it's because torque is a cross product, a vector product, as opposed to a scalar product. It's the multiplication of two vectors. And usually that's kind of the way it's explained. You go through all the math and you see how the quantities come out and voila! That's why it happens. But I don't think that's a very satisfying explanation. It certainly didn't satisfy me when I heard it. For one thing, you have to actually understand the math. But for another, it doesn't really provide a conceptual explanation for why it does that. When I first learned about this, I understood the math, but I did not know why it was happening. Gravity wants to pull this down just like normal. So what is it about the spinning that creates a force to counter gravity? Derek at Veritasium has a couple of excellent videos on this topic, but even after watching those, I still think it's a bit of a head scratcher. So let's break this down and go through it more carefully. Let's really get to the bottom of why something so strange is happening. So when the wheel isn't spinning and it's in this position, what forces are acting on the wheel itself? Well, gravity is acting on the center of the wheel, pulling it straight down. And the string is acting as an upward force, pulling it up. But those two forces aren't acting along the same line of action. The string is pulling on the hook over here, pulling straight up and the force of gravity is pulling on the wheel itself over here. So, so although they're acting in opposite directions, because they're not pointed directly in line with each other, it causes rotation. This part wants to go down, this part wants to go up, so when you let go, it rotates around. They go like this, essentially. So you could treat it as this part of the wheel at the top here is feeling a force this way, and this part of the wheel at the bottom is feeling a force that way, causing the rotation. But if we spin the wheel, um, that isn't what happens, it stays in position. So something else is going on. Now those forces are exactly the same when the wheel is spinning, but the net result of those forces is different. What happens is this top element of the wheel feels a force down, but at the very top it starts off with a velocity of zero, it starts off not moving. As the force is applied to it, its velocity will increase. A force applied to a stationary object will increase its velocity. But by the time it has its maximum velocity, this element of the wheel, because it's spinning, is no longer here. It's over at the side here. So whereas normally it would rotate down, because it's over the side, it instead rotates around, making the wheel precess. We can do the same treatment to an element at the bottom of the wheel, although it's a lot harder to hold. I'm going to kind of let go of the string, and you're just going to have to imagine that the string is going straight up, because this is really difficult to balance at this point. Um, but let's say, so this is the wheel, and the string's holding it straight up. So again, this element here wants to move up to make it fall to the bottom. So it wants to rotate like this. So this part of the wheel is feeling a, a, an effective force pointed up. Now again, at the bottom, when we first release the wheel, this element has a velocity of zero, it's not moving. As a force is applied to it, its velocity should increase over time. But by the time it reaches its maximum velocity, this element of the wheel is no longer at the bottom, meaning it doesn't go like this anymore. This element of the wheel has now moved over here, close to me. And so since normally it would go like this, if it rotates over here, it's now gonna move around. So the top and the bottom experience the greatest force, but the sides here and here have the greatest velocity. And velocity is movement, so that is what determines the movement. Which goes to show that very often in physics, the most intuitive thing, the most obvious answer, is not the truth. Sometimes we have to think really carefully to explain what we see. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep questioning.